All right, everyone, I just got back from an appointment with a client, not for doing a shoot. I was actually over helping them with a live stream. They were having some issues with the live stream setup. But before going to the office location, I decided, hey, let's grab the Theta Z1. So here's the Theta Z1 right here. And I said, we're going to do a couple of photos in this office because it's a pretty cool office, number one. But number two, it's also a good learning experience on utilizing Lightroom in my Lightroom series. So when we're talking about Lightroom, we are mostly talking about our drone work, but we can also do 360 imaging and utilize Lightroom to help us with the edits. Um, we can also take photos with iPhones or uh, Androids. We can do digital SLRs. We can do mirrorless cameras. But since I was going down for this meeting this morning, I said, hey, let's, let's go ahead have a little fun and take a couple shots while we're there and put it up in a video. So what you're looking at here is a couple of different things. We've got a couple of items where we shot for HDR DNGs with the Ricoh Theta Z1. So this allows us to get more detail and get the color space right. And, um, you know, doing an HDR DNG, when you look at this, it kind of looks odd and you ask yourself, you know, what can I actually do with this? Well, since we were using the dual fisheye plugin, I actually have given myself a little more room. And let's just move through here. All right, so here's one of the first final images that I wanted to work on. This is a DNG file, and next to the DNG is the HDR DNG. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well, Rich, this looks terrible. Give me a minute. It's gonna it's gonna move away from terrible. Let me hit the D key really quick for the develop module. So I got back from the uh, client office and I immediately offloaded these things. I made sure to put some keywords in for myself and it's pretty obvious what this is. It's an HDR DNG. I'm very used to seeing these types of formats from the Ricoh Theta Z1. So right now this is not looking good at all. Terrible. Um, but the range, the dynamic range that we have built into this HDR DNG is amazing. I'm going over and we're just going to go right over to um, to our editor here. So our raw editor. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push the exposure up so that we can see things in here. So already that's looking a little better. Now, what's the next thing? These windows are completely blown out. How about if we go down to highlights, drop it down, negative 100. We're seeing out the window. We're actually seeing the smoke cloud out the window because Prescott is experiencing a forest fire just to the south of us. It's about 12 miles south of town. It's been ongoing for over a week. So things out the window are a little wonky. And we can also see that we've got some chromatic aberrations going on, which we can deal with as well in here. But so now we've got some detail out the window and I'd like to push the shadow detail up a little bit more. Let's see, that is way too much. So I'm gonna say the shadow detail Maybe we'll put that at uh, plus 50 for shadows. And then I'm just going to hold the shift key, double click the whites, double click blacks really quick. And so overall, this is looking pretty good. We've, we're competing with a lot of colors in here. We've got a lot of warm stuff going on, like this tabletop and this uh, gaming bench right here, and also these orange couches over here. So our white balance isn't spot on here. And I am going to borrow this little statue over here of Humphrey Bogart. And in my develop module, here's the white balance tool. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna borrow that really quick. That cooled things off massively. So maybe it cooled it off a little too much for us. And we can just slide that in here to a happy medium. So this is already starting to look a lot better. We're going to add just a touch of clarity. And I don't really, I'm looking at the vibrance saying, do you need vibrance? And quite honestly, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to add any vibrance to this because it is already an incredibly colorful scene. So I think we're going to leave it there. I am going to go down to the detail pane and we're just going to hit that noise reduction by about plus 20. And so let's look in here. I'm not seeing any pixelation in here. And this is what it really looks like. We've got a computer monitor down here. We also have a little LED fireplace in here. And if we look at the other side, this is not artwork up on the wall. This is actually a TV screen playing in the background. 
So overall, this is looking pretty good to me. Um, and like I said, this was a spur of the moment kind of decision. Um, so I was just doing this as an extra while I was visiting with my client. They do have blue lights up in here. So these are truly blue lights. And then we've got these LEDs up in here as, as well. So we are competing with a lot of uh, a lot of different color casts. But overall, this is looking pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do next, this is such a simple process. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to edit in. And since I'm using the Ricoh Theta Z1, I have access to the Ricoh Theta Stitcher. And I added that into my Lightroom settings as one of my editing programs. If I click on the edit with the Ricoh Stitcher, it's going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Let's go ahead and do that. So now we're just waiting for it to open up the Stitcher. It's going to take just a moment. It's not going to take a long time, I promise. There we go, as a matter of fact. And I have to say, the Ricoh Theta Stitcher does an excellent job here. So what we're looking at, we've got all the automatic settings. I'm not going to change anything in here. I'm going to go with its suggestion, and I'm going to say OK to it. Now, this new version look, may look a little more familiar to you if you were used to doing 360s. So this now is a 360 that's just about ready to go. I could, let's hit the G key really quick. So I could do more fine tuning if I wanted to, but as we can see, it's our HDR edit. This is 20476. Let's arrow over. So there's the HDR DNG 20476. And then that is a different one. So there we've got the HDR DNG edit. There we have the final edit for display. And then here's the original DNG, not the HDR DNG, just the original DNG. But this gives us a lot more flexibility. We can play with the, um, with the colors a little more. We could even get a little more detail out of the windows if we wanted to. What do I do with this next? Just to check it out and see what other edits I want, I'm going to go ahead and hit export. And I'm putting this in a folder called Full Size Tips because I'm putting this out huge. So I just want to toy around with it, take a look at it, and see how much more we need to edit. So I'm going to hit export here. It's going to be putting that on my desktop. And I'm going to minimize that window. And now I'm going to open up the desktop area where that full-size TIFF was put. And we're going to drag that into Affinity Photo. That's another editor that I use. And the main reason why I use Affinity Photo is for cleaning up 360s and dealing with 360s. Why do I use this? Quite simple up on the toolbar under layer we have a live projection and under the live projection there's our equo rectangular projection when i click on this we're going into 360 mode here folks so we are actually able with affinity photo to take a look at our 360 image so that those couches that that is the color of orange Humphrey Bogart over here in the corner, that does look like the, the yellow of the jacket. Um, we can even see Prescott Social here. So they did have an event at the uh, office location. I had no idea they had an event last night. I just brought the Z1 for giggles here. And so as you can see, we've got some fun little gaming tables going on in here. This is quite an interesting office to say the least. So this is looking pretty good for me. What I would do next is export this to a JPEG. And um, from that JPEG, I'd be uploading it to Kula so that um, so that the client could actually take a look around. So they were on site this morning as well. And I said to them, hey, do you mind if I uh, just fire off a shot? Because I've been wanting to shoot this office for quite a while. And as we can see, all right, down here, down below, there is our monopod. So we could, in fact, go into... Um, go into our, let's see over here. We've got an undo brush here. There we go. The patch tool, what I want to use is the in-painting brush tool. So now I can do edits live on my 360, which is awesome because I can pan around the 360 and, um, you know, pick areas to edit. So I could go right here. Let's get rid of that monopod footing. Not that most people would even notice that. There we go. It's gone. That in-painting brush is awesome. I'm going to click back over here, and uh, what I'm going to do next under layer is remove the projection. And now we can actually go back into layer and put the projection back on there so that we can take a look around here. So we could go through and do a little more selective correcting if we needed to, but overall, this has come out really nice. 
Um, so I'm not going to save this. I'm going to close this because I just wanted to share this with you. I'm going to be doing a little bit longer of an edit later on that. And the final part of the edit really doesn't have anything to do with the Lightroom workflow and Lightroom course that I'm putting together here. Um, it's just Lightroom has handled this for us for the importing, for the management of where the image is stored, and also for all of the develop work that we wanted to do. So let's just take a look before we wrap this up, also in Lightroom that was offloaded this morning. So I just did a couple of automated D or I'm sorry, automated HDRs. So I didn't use the dual fisheye. I used what's built into the camera and into the iPhone app. And so I just took quick photos in here. And once again, this is really warm. These are only JPEGs, by the way, but I'm going to hit the develop key and let's see what happens in here. I would like to take those highlights down. So taking those highlights down just bought us a bunch more information out the window. And I don't think we really need to pump shadows up anymore in here. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. Let's just push this up. Not really a huge difference in the shadows here. So let's bring that to 50. Let's try the white point and the black point. And we're going to borrow Humphrey Bogart again with the white balance tool. And wow, that just really cooled things off. Maybe it cooled things off a little too much. So we can bring that back a bit and get ourselves some kind of happy medium. Now, if we wanted to in here, we could also try to get a little more detail out of the windows. And so one of the things I might do is go into the masking tool up here on the right and go down to the brush tool. Hello, brush tool. And let's see here. We could drop the exposure or we could drop the highlights or we could do both. So I'm going to take the brush tool and I'm just going to brush in here. And it's not really recovering very much as we can see. Now let's drop the con or let's drop the exposure. Oh no. So there's only so much that we can do with the JPEG versions. We don't have as much flexibility as that HDR DNG for those bracketed images. But overall, let's go ahead and I'm going to delete this right here. Let's delete that brush and I'm just going to turn off the masking. I'm going to come back out here. So this is what I'd call a super quick image where we're using the automatic JPEG settings and HDR settings provided with the Z1. And let's move over to another one. It's kind of the same story here again. You know, drop the highlights. I got a little more out of the windows there. Push up the uh, shadows ever so slightly. We'll do the whites really quick, blacks really quick. And the one other thing we're going to do is borrow Humphrey Bogart again. And, you know, this one is going to be kind of a two-year taste. I like this a little better. This feels more like the interior, but this is one of those two-year tastes kind of things because we have so many competing color casts in here. We're never going to get it absolutely perfect. And, you know, we've got these incandescents over here, the LEDs over here, what's coming in from the window, um, and, uh, you know, more lighting over here. So we've got a little bit of everything going on. But so very quickly, you know, I'm looking back at the two HDR DNGs very much like that one a lot and same with this one as well so they'll both be going up on my Kula site as well so be sure to stop by Kula to see some of the examples of the 360 work that we do as well all right so there we go this is an insight into a super quick shoot using a theta z1 and utilizing lightroom again to not only manage it but do most of the heavy lifting for the editing of these hdr dmg 360s produced by the Z1. All right, everyone, I hope you found this one informative, and I hope it's gotten you thinking about building 360s into your drone business as well, because our clients will always take more services from us, especially when we're doing a good job for it.